Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to a little more about Input, a Input Manager by Juju Adams and Owen Keith. One of the most useful extensions in all Game Maker, I've made a few videos about it in the past, links to all the relevant things can be found down below. So in the last one of these videos, I demonstrated how easy the system makes it to rebind controls so that you can, uh, uh, really offer support for control config to the player, which is a generally a good idea for variety of reasons. Accessibility options, just a nice thing to have in general. Today I'm going to explain how you can take a bit of a different path and use this to display icons for all the various keyboard and mouse and gamepad and whatever inputs. That's another thing that's very nice to have, but if you're doing it yourself it can become a little bit tedious to do things like make sure that the PlayStation control icons are displayed when you have a PlayStation controller plugged in or an Xbox set of icons displayed when you have an Xbox controller plugged in. So I'm going to start with a set of input icons. I'm going to be using uh, this icon collection here, uh, Gamepad UI Controller Prompts Packed by uh, Great.Brown on itch.io. I'll also have a link to this down in the video description. It's free. Uh, I quite like them. If you're looking for another style, you can look up Gamepad icons and uh, you'll find quite a few uh, different ones out there on places like itch.io, OpenGameArt, uh, the various marketplaces across the internet. Uh, so in my case, when I first download these uh, these files, they're going to look something like this, uh, which is uh, to say that um, all the uh, all the images are going to be in basically a spreadsheet, and that's uh, that's fine and all, but I'm going to need these for uh, purposes to do with input. I'm going to need all of these to be on um, individual images. I'm going to need them to be in in their own sprites. So I've gone ahead and I have uh, basically divided them up. Uh, ahead of time, and I've chopped them all up so that we can uh, we can use them more individually. So if I were to import my um, my button prompts folder in here, uh, you see that we have all of the uh, the keyboard keys, and uh, further down the uh, the Xbox the Xbox icons, uh, all as individual sprites. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go into the file input config icons and if you want to configure the sprites or uh, if you want text names that go with each of the uh, that go with each of the input uh, types each of the gamepad buttons keyboard keys and whatever uh, you can define them here so this file of code has a few defaults uh, we have input icons gamepad and then it's going to list out like in text um, the descriptions of things like the the bottom face button the rightmost face button um, D-pad buttons and uh, things of that nature. And there are definitions for all kinds of different uh, different gamepad types. We have Xbox One, uh, we have um, PlayStation 5 DualShocks, uh, Switch controllers, uh, Joy-Cons, Switch Joy-Cons. Uh, Switch controllers, at least uh, by default, have a little bit of trouble working on uh, PC unless you use like Steam's driver, uh, which is a little annoying. Um, some people have run into issues with that. Anyway, uh, so if I want to define icons to go with different keyboard and mouse, key, uh, keyboard and mouse keys, I can uh, take this function. This function is uh, is going to return basically just a big old collection of sprites that are mapped onto uh, the different uh, keys on the keyboard, and I can say dot add. Uh, if I want to add an icon to the A key on the keyboard, I can say dot add uh, capital A in a string and then S P R U I. Uh, perhaps I uh, made some of these names a little bit too long. S S P R underscore U I prompt uh, keyboard mouse A, and you can do the same thing with like B, uh, C, if you want. Um, I believe uh, there's a oh, it's arrow, arrow up uh, the arrow keys if you want. Hey. Uh, you could type these all out manually yourself if you want. I do not really want to type them out manually because I'll be here all night. Uh, so instead, I'm going to go over into my demo project, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to copy the work that I've already done uh, setting this up, and I'm going to paste in the uh, the mappings for all the keyboard keys, all of the like the letters, the numbers, function keys, control keys down here, punctuation, uh, all those things, number pad because those are different from the number the regular numbers, different virtual key codes. And I'm also going to do the same thing for gamepads. Uh, fortunately, the Xbox gamepad does not have quite as many buttons as a standard keyboard with its 
I don't know, how, however many dozens of keys on the keyboard. So anyway, uh, I can go and copy this, paste that in, and I now have uh, the, uh, for example, the Xbox uh, A button icon, this one here, uh, mapped to gamepad face south, which is just whatever uh, button happens to be on the bottom of the face buttons on uh, your controller. I think that's that circle on a PlayStation controller or cross, I can't remember. So if you have more icons and if you want to set this up for things like the, the PlayStation controllers or uh, Nintendo controllers, or if you really scroll down, you can even, um, like if you have a set of icons to go with like a GameCube controller and if the, the GameCube's, um, if the GameCube controller's ID is in uh, Inputs database, it'll, it'll work and these will show up and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, that's setting up the icons. And if you want to actually be able to display them, um, I'm going to just go into how about the draw GUI event for uh, the player here. And I'm going to get rid of those hearts on the top of the screen because it's, uh, I don't really need them and they're taking up space. I'm going to start by saying, uh, let's save our binding action is going to be equal to input binding get. Uh, that function is going to take a verb as the input, uh, the verb that I'm interested in being action. By the way, as a general rule, a lot of the functions in input that have to do with specific verbs, a lot of them like the input checkers and the input binding get and a bunch of the other ones only need to take the verb name as the uh, as the parameter, but they do have alternate arguments for things like um, if you have multiple players, if you have uh, like alternate controls, like multiple keys going to one verb. And you can all pass those all in as optional arguments if you want. I haven't really been acknowledging that, but it's there if you want it. Anyway, input binding get is just going to return a little blob of data that has to do with whatever the um, whatever key or whatever button is bound to that particular verb. And you can get a few pieces of information from that. Uh, for example, input binding get um, icon in our case. Uh, and we can pass the binding to this function, binding action. Uh, this will return whatever you mapped to a particular uh, key or button in this uh, in this code file over here, whether that's a, a, a sprite or just um, like a text name, like is the default. And I can save this to binding icon. And you also can, for whatever reason, if you wanted to, you just get the like the name. Um, of the uh, of the binding uh, with input binding get name like this. Uh, generally, this is not something that you need because the player doesn't really care about like gamepad thumb stack l left or gamepad face east or whatever anything anything like that. Generally, they care about the icon that you want to give it, but whatever. I can draw on the screen. Let's say draw text. Um, I'll start in the corner 3232. Um, the action button is mapped to, let's map the, uh, or rather let's draw the binding name next to it. Uh, we can also draw a sprite. Let's draw the sprite underneath it, 3264. Uh, actually that's the other way around, isn't it? Uh, binding icon. Image frame zero, 3264. Um, you know what, let's, uh, let's also do the cast verb. So we can input binding get cast. Um, binding cast icon, binding cast name. And let me just make sure that this is drawn. Uh, not on top of the other text, and I should probably also uh, like draw set font, draw set color, just to make it a little easier to read. Okay. So this is going to draw both the name of the binding and the icon that goes with it on the screen. And uh, if you ever wanted to have like a button prompt that comes up whenever you uh, like stand next to an object that you can interact with or whatever, you can you can do that. So the action button is mapped to space. Uh, the cast button is what this should say, is mapped to tab. All right, very nice. Uh, if I were to go and pick up my Xbox controller, where is it? 
I just had it. And if I were to start walking around with the Xbox controller, you can see that the, uh, the sprite has changed. We are now uh, looking up the A button to go with the action, the action verb. Uh, we can see that it's mapped to gamepad face south. Um, magic uh, cast is mapped to gamepad face west. That is the X button. Um, all right, can talk to you. If I wanted to rebind these, so let's uh, go back to the keyboard here. Um, and I wanted to, let's say, put the action button on like, I don't know, backspace or something. We can see that uh, the name changes and the icon is updated accordingly. We don't have to do anything else. It's just done on its own. Uh, if I want to, uh, if I wanted to like switch them. So if I map the action button to like tab, uh, we can see that uh, backspace and uh, tab have been, have been switched here. I realized that the backspace icon and the tab icon are almost the same. So, uh, page down. Now they look different. So that is, uh, that is gamepad icons. It's really easy. I appreciate how easy Juju and Alin made this. Uh, it uh, really saves me just so much time having to do this myself. Now, in the same way that I didn't really get into how you might create an actual menu to offer uh, control binding to the player in your game, whatever that might look like, I'm also not super interested in getting into actually drawing button prompts in, in the game, like how to draw button prompts, because that's something that's going to be very, very specific to the game that you're actually making. And I would rather cover like generally applicable concepts like this uh, most of the time in these videos. But that's that. If you've ever wanted to display icons to go with your verb, to go with the controls in your game, this is how. I'm going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. That is that is a lot of changes on account of all of the all the icons that I added. Oof. And uh, as I said, I will also have links to the uh, Great Doc Brown's uh, itch.io page where you can get these icons yourself. I would rather you download these icons from this itch.io page because I don't want to accidentally end up in a situation where I'm kind of like rehosting someone else's assets. I'll probably also put links to a few other similar um, gamepad icon, you know, things like this in the video description in case these aren't to your liking. Anyway, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this and one let's make a game. Currently a uh, 3D Zelda like wizard game. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful. I hope you all found this to be easier than you thought it was going to be. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, Head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.